The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Today's build was inspired by a project from Ben Heck. He was working on a Hex game and he posted on the Element 14 community a competition to win one of his prototypes. So I wrote in with my idea for a Fizzbuzz game and uh, uh, around Christmas that year I was sent a Ben Heck original. The following year I started building the Fizzbuzz game but due to work commitments and things I was writing for magazines um, the project got forgotten about and put in a box um, and, and packed away and, and forgotten. Um, again, if you've been following on the community, you'll know that I've got a, a new house, a new workshop up here in Scotland. So, um, as I unpacked my boxes, I found my Ben Heck original and um, also the parts for the Fizzbuzz project. So I decided now was a good time to uh, get that project finished. So let's see how I did. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So what are we going to need to build this project? We're going to need some kind of brain or a microcontroller. I've been looking at the Pico Pi. Uh, it can be programmed in either C or Python, so hopefully I can use some of the Python from my previous experiments with Fizzbuzz. We're going to need um, some input buttons. So I've got some big momentary press buttons I, I can use. Um, and we're going to need the display. So, um, so following Ben Heck's idea, we're going to use um, LED displays. Um, I'm going to step up from the seven segment to 14 segment displays. That allows us to display letters as well as numbers. It does give us some challenges. Um, and hence, to control it, we'll need some kind of driver chip. Um, been looking at custom chips that do seven segment driving. Um, to get those to work with 14 segments does seem to be quite a lot of pain. So they didn't seem to give a lot of advantage and they did add extra cost. So I've gone for a slightly simpler approach, um, something called a shift register. Um, and that allows us to send serial data out from the microcontroller and par uh, provides parallel data to the display. Parts needed for this project. A microcontroller, in this case a Pico Pi, some 14 segment alphanumeric displays, a couple of shift registers, in this case a 4094, four transistors to activate each of the digits, and some buttons to fizz and buzz, some resistors to control the current to the displays, and some more resistors to control the current to the transistors. What does a shift register do and how, how does it help us with our project? So a shift register has a data input and a clock input and it has many outputs. So in my case, eight. And what happens is we present data on the data line. So I might have a high signal. We then send a clock pulse and the data appears on the first cell of the shift register. We then send another bit of data and another clock pulse and our data moves across. And we can repeat this. So we've got another one. Bit eight of the shift register. And if we kept doing that, the data would fall out the end of the shift register and get replaced with new data. So the next step, once we've got the eight bits of data we want into the uh, shift register, is to use the second part of the chip, which is a buffer, and that has a strobe line. And when we activate the strobe line with a pulse, all the data moves to the output. So let's look at the display driver in a bit more detail. The microcontroller sends a serial signal through to the shift registers. That in turn gives us 14 individually controlled segments that we can connect to the displays. We connect them through a series resistor that limits the amount of current 
that is sent to the to the LEDs. On the other side of the displays, we have a common cathode. Now there are two different types of these displays. There's a common anode and a common cathode. And you do need to make sure you get the right type um, for your particular use case. Quite often the custom chips that uh, drive these will only work um, if you have the, the right uh, type to go with them. So in my case, I wanted a common cathode um, and that allows us to control um, which of the digits is uh, turned on using a transistor. So what we do is we send our uh, information to the display and then we turn on only the first digit using the, um, the transistor and leave the others blank. We then repeat that, uh, send new data through the shift register and we turn on just the second digit and then we send more data and we turn on just the third digit and we send more data and we turn on just the fourth digit. And if we do that fast enough, what we'll find is that the uh, appearance of the display, it looks like all four digits are um, lit up at the same time. Um, so this is a technique called multiplexing. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! When I'm working with a new microcontroller, I like to break my code down into smaller chunks so I can see the behavior of the different characteristics. Uh, for example, I was interested to know how the input pins of the PicoPi um, could be configured and used. I was glad to see that the PicoPi supports what's called hardware interrupts. This allows us to attach bits of code to the changes of signals on the pins. So in this case, when the button is pressed, I want to run uh, the handler routines. So I have two handlers, one's called handler fizz, one's called handler buzz, um, and one will run when the buzz button is pressed and one will run when the fizz button is pressed. Um, and all they do, it, we can see here on uh, line six, all they do is to set a variable to true on six and 10. In my main function, this press any key to continue, I reset those two values to false, display a message, I then wait for the buttons to be pressed and when they are pressed I print another message. So let's see that in action. We connect our board, we run the code, it's going to print a message out for us, there we go, and if we press the button, there we go, it's detected the button pressed. So here's my test code for the display. Uh, we start out by uh, including that machine library again and time and a new library here called thread. As it, uh, the tooltip says, it provides the operation to write multi-threaded programs. So we'll see that um, uh, come, in, uh, come into effect uh, a little bit later. So first we define the digits. These are all the different segments that need to light up for each of our displays. Um, and our initial value for the display is effectively four spaces. Next, we've got some functions that handle the um, interaction with the shift register. So our clock, we take the clock pin high, we wait for 10 microseconds, we take the clock pin low, and then we wait another 10 microseconds. So to write a bit of data, we set the data uh, pin, and then we call the clock. And if we want to do that with uh, 16 digits, we can take a 16-bit digit in, and for each of the bits in that uh, uh, data, we can write that out uh, to the display. So we do that by shifting the data to the right, and then just looking at the very first bit of the result. To enable our digits, we first turn the output enable off, so we don't want uh, the display to uh, flicker while we're changing it. Um, we then scan through each of the uh, output pins and if the digit that we're interested in is that digit then we'll um, turn it on otherwise we turn it off 
Uh, we then write the data to the output buffer, wait a little time, um, turn that strobe line off again, and then we finally turn on the output enable so then that uh, the digit appears on the screen. So to wrap that all up, we can write a digit by passing a number and its position. So whether it's digit one to four, like nought to three in fact. And then finally, um, a simple routine here. If we're gonna update the display, all we're effectively doing is storing a string in our display string. So we'll come back to refresh display in a second and we'll see how that gets called. So here we go, set up in, uh, setting up the pins. We've got clock, data, strobe, output enable. These are all straightforward, pretty much enable the pin. And then for the digit pins, because there's four of them, we set that up in a little loop. So M plus five, so I'm gonna start at pin five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I mentioned we we're gonna come back to refresh display and here it is. So we do thread, start new thread, and tell that thread to call refresh display. So on the Pico Pi, when you start a new thread, what it does is it switches to the second core uh, of the device and it will run the code on that, uh, that call by itself. So let's come back to what refresh is doing. So refresh is constantly, uh, so we've got a continual loop here. Well, that's always true. It's constantly cycling through the four digits and it's writing out the display um, based on the display string that we set uh, just above here in the update display. So for each of the displays, we set the digits to, down here we uh, write the digits out to the display. So what that LN allows us to do is to have a very simple main loop here where we update the display to one value, wait a little bit of time, and then update it to a different value, and then wait a little bit of time. So a sort of blink equivalent using um, the uh, four digit displays. FizzBuzz is a counting game designed to help you uh, learn your three and five times tables. You start by counting from one and then two, but when you get to three, you say fizz. And then four, and then when you get to five, you say buzz. And every time you hit a multiple of three or five, you say fizz or buzz. So one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, fizz, 13, 14, fizz buzz. So how that's gonna work in the game is as the screen counts up, the user will need to press either the fizz or the buzz or both buttons, depending on whether the number shown on the screen is a multiple of three or five or both. Okay, let's play the game. One, two, Fizz, four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, eleven, fizz, thirteen, fourteen, fizz, buzz, fizz, buzz. Oh, too slow. Well, that's FizzBuzz. It's great to get a project finally finished that had been sitting on the shelf for so long. Do you have any projects that you're a little bit stuck on, maybe lacking motivation or technical input? Then why not head over to the Element 14 community and see if the other members have got some ideas that uh, can help you along. Thank you for watching. Okay.